வணக்கம் அல்நார் கிளப் ஹேண்ட் இட்ஸ் தி ஆப்போசிட் ஆஃப் ரேடியல் கிளப் ஹேண்ட் ரைட் நோ நாட் அட் ஆல் இட்ஸ் டோட்லி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் இட்ஸ் நாட் ஜஸ்ட் தி போஸ்ட் ஆக்சியல் இன்வால்மெண்ட் வைல் ரேடியல் கிளப் ஹேண்ட் இஸ் இன்வால்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த ப்ரீ ஆக்சியல் சைட் ஆஃப் தி அப்பலின் இட்ஸ் மச் மோர் இட் இஸ் மோர் டைவர்ஸ் இன் தட் தி ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் இன்வால்விங் தி அப்பர் லிம் ஆர் டோட்லி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஷல் சி த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கிளினிக்கல் ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் த மேனிஃபெஸ்டேஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் அல்லார் லாங்கிடியூட்னல் டிஃபிஷியன்சி ஆஸ் தி என்டையர் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் ஆஃப் திஸ் ப்ராப்ளம் இஸ் கால்ட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஸ்ட்ராட்டஜிஸ் தட் ஆர் அவைலபிள் மே பி நாட் ஆஸ் எலாபரேட் ஆஸ் த ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ப்ரோட்டோகால்ஸ் ஆஃப் ரேடியல் லாங்கிடியூட்னல் டிஃபிஷியன்சி but definitely there is a role for different treatment strategies for ulnar club hand ulnar longitudinal deficiency sometimes known as ulnar hypoplasia or aplasia and sometimes even ulnar club hand was first described by goller in 1693 it refers to partial or complete failure of formation of the ulna it has also been known by the names congenital ulnar hemimelia or ulnar ray deficiency it is the rarest of the congenital longitudinal deficiencies it affects the whole upper extremity most severely at the elbow and hand in this condition functionally most children adapt except in some syndromic cases but aesthetically they are very poor for both static and dynamic appearance browdy and smith way back in 1979 observed that the ulnar longitudinal deficiency is not simply the post axial counterpart of the radial longitudinal deficiency in radial longitudinal deficiency only the radial side is affected whereas in ulnar longitudinal deficiency not only is the ulnar side affected but even thumb anomalies are seen ulnar longitudinal deficiency is 5 to 10 times less common than radial longitudinal deficiency and the male to female ratio is 3 is to 2 for ulnar longitudinal deficiency most presentations about 70% are right sided and unilateral with ulnar deviation of the hand and a shortened forearm but it can be a bilateral presentation like in this example as far as the etiology is concerned the exact cause why ulnar longitudinal deficiency occurs remains unknown it is likely to be a result of a problem earlier in utero than radial deficiency probably occurring during the weeks 5 to 6 of development but it has been proved that it is a rare sporadic skeletal condition and longitudinal deficiency occurs at the posterior axis of the upper limb where the ulna bone is situated this is the place where the zone of polarizing activity occurs and deficiency of the sonic hedgehog gene pathway is responsible for the development of the ulnar sided forearm structures and four ulnar sided digits this sonic hedgehog gene deficiency explains the thumb abnormalities that occasionally accompany ulna dysplasias the common associated conditions with ulna longitudinal deficiency or aplasia or hypoplasia of the ulna are conditions like missing digits or ectrodactyly which are present in 90% of the cases thumb abnormality is present in 70% of the cases and syndactyly which is present in 30% of the patients presenting with ulna longitudinal deficiency the condition of ulna longitudinal deficiency can also be associated with certain syndromes like the cornelia delage syndrome which is associated with microcephaly cleft palate cardiac defects and severe developmental delay the schinzel gideon syndrome which is associated with ventricular septal defects pyloric stenosis anal stenosis and reduced sweating A common associated syndrome is the femoral fibular ulna deficiency syndrome where there is a short stature fibula hypoplasia and talipus equino varus in a condition called ulnar fibula dysplasia again there is short stature fibula hypoplasia alone along with mandibular hypoplasia 
when there is klippel field syndrome ulnar longitudinal deficiency may present with the characteristic features of short webbed neck and cervical vertebral abnormalities the ulnar club hand may also be associated with a syndrome called the ulnar mammary syndrome where there is hypoplasia of the breasts nipples and apocrine glands and abnormal teeth and genitalia the first important clinical feature to note is that the limb may be positioned in such a way that the hand faces backwards the elbow may be fixed in either extension or flexion with synostosis affecting the radiohumeral or ulnohumeral segments the elbow may move but may be unstable in mild cases elbow may appear to function well until the teenage years when there is a growth spurt the child may develop a lump on the posterolateral aspect which becomes painful and unsightly this is due to the growth of the radius and it represents a dislocated radial head the forearm is usually short and the radius may be bowed with the radial head dislocated and the hand appearing ulnar deviated pronation and supination are restricted or absent depending on the severity of ulnar deficiency and the presence or absence of associated radio ulnar synostosis the wrist is relatively stable compared with the elbow although the skeletally mature wrist will show carpal hypoplasia and coalitions it may be ulnar deviated although this is rarely progressive and is mild compared to the deviation seen in radial club hand the pisiform bone is always absent and sometimes the hamate triquetral capitate and trapezoid may also be hypoplastic or absent abnormalities of the hand are expected the absence of some digits that is ectrodactyly is the most frequent anomaly but unlike in radial ray dysplasia there may be both preaxial and postaxial abnormalities with thumb and first web deficiencies being common and often combined with postaxial hypoplasia and occasionally preaxial duplication sometimes there may be a complete syndactyly with suppressed digit between them so it resembles a cleft hand in a three digit hand it is usually the thumb middle and ring fingers which are the most likely to be present the radial artery may be absent in 50% of the cases and there may be a persistent median artery in 16.7% abnormalities of the deep palmar arch and digital arteries may be seen when there is dysplasia of the ulna this x-ray shows the left forearm and hand radiograph depicting a small ovoid bone in the expected location of the ulna without articulation to the humerus or to the wrist this x-ray shows moderate bowing of the radius and frank dislocation with respect to the humerus there are many classification systems available for ulnar longitudinal deficiency the most common classification system is the one by bain which is based on the degree of ulnar deficiency this is based on the radiological evaluation another classification proposed by pally and herzenberg relates better to the possible treatment strategies for the forearm we shall see the bain classification of the ulnar longitudinal deficiency in detail according to the original bain classification there were four types type 1 ulnar hypoplasia with intact proximal and distal epiphysis type 2 refers to partial ulnar aplasia which is the most common type there is an abnormal bar of fibrous tissue known as an enlarge extending from the distal that is the wrist side end of the ulna to the wrist the elbow is functional and stable there may be some differences in the fingers or thumb type 3 refers to total ulnar aplasia with carpal and digital deficiencies the elbow is unstable and hand and wrist malformations are common type 4 refers to radio humeral synostosis with considerable bowing of the radius and usually malformation of the hand as well haven hill and mansky et al in 2005 proposed another type called type 0 
where there is a normal ulna with hand anomalies alone that is involvement of the ulnar border of the hand gold farb introduced another type type 5 where there is severe radio humeral synostosis with humeral bifurcation the pally and herzenberg classification is almost similar to the bain classification that we have seen here there are five types in type 1 there is ulnar hypoplasia with distal epiphysis intact in type 2 there is partial ulnar aplasia with absence of the distal third in type 3 again there is partial ulnar aplasia with absent distal two thirds type 4 refers to total ulnar aplasia and type 5 refers to radio humeral synostosis in this child presenting with bilateral ulnar longitudinal deficiency we can make out hypoplasia of the ulna preaxial and postaxial polydactyly on the right side and similar findings on the left side also here there is a severe narrowing of the thumb web and the thumb is almost in the same plane as the fingers but on both sides you will note that there is a radio humeral synostosis making it bilateral type 4 ulnar longitudinal deficiency the treatment of the condition of ulnar longitudinal deficiency depends on certain factors like the hand position thumb function elbow stability or the presence of syndactyly the treatment can be non operative or operative the non operative management consists of stretching and splinting in the early stages but in ulnar longitudinal deficiency these procedures are not as useful as they are in radial longitudinal deficiency the operative management may consist of surgery on the arm surgery on the elbow surgery on the forearm which could be on the radius on the ulna or on the synostosis surgery on the hand or surgery of the thumb surgery on the arm will consist of mainly humeral rotation osteotomies to help reposition the hand so that it lies within the child's sight surgery on the elbow may consist of release of the elbow to gain range of motion which can be done less than 6 months of age but the long term results are usually poor elbow arthroplasty has not been found to be useful in this situation surgery on the forearm will involve treatment of the radial head dislocation this can be treated with distraction lengthening of the ulna and this may have to be repeated several times during childhood as the child keeps growing radial head excision before skeletal maturity may result in wrist pain and deformity creation of a one bone forearm can be considered if elbow instability is present this creation of a one bone forearm can be done in stage 2 ulnar longitudinal deficiency to provide stability at the expense of forearm motion but the child must be at least 6 months old for this surgery another surgical procedure on the forearm is early excision of the fibrocartilaginous enlarge at the distal end of the ulna to prevent radial bowing if the growth has already occurred correction of the radial bowing by osteotomy with or without ulna lengthening can be done to improve the aesthetic appearance sometimes an osteotomy of the synostosis followed by interposition of soft tissue may be required in stage 4 to obtain elbow motion surgery on the hand in ulnar longitudinal deficiency may involve surgery to improve the first web to release digital syndactyly or to perform metacarpal osteotomies to provide pulp to pulp opposition of the existing fingers and thumb as mentioned earlier in some cases the thumb may be hypoplastic if it is hypoplastic polycization or toe transfer may need to be done but this needs to be considered only when the other fingers are present and the decision must be made after discussing with the parents if there is thumb duplication surgery can be done but we must remember that the results of the surgery must not affect the overall function of the hand pally and herzenberg have described a treatment protocol 
based on their classification. In type 1, ulnar longitudinal deficiency without radial head dislocation, they prescribed repeated ulnar lengthening or radial shortening or both with correction of the radial bow. In type 1, with radial head dislocation, again, they advised repeated ulnar corrective osteotomy and radial shortening or ulnar corrective osteotomy and lengthening. For type 2 deformities, they advised bone transport of the ulna distally to end up supporting the carpus. For type 3, they advised creation of one bone forearm. And for type 4, corrective radial osteotomy. For type 5, they advised osteotomy at elbow to improve the elbow position and forearm osteotomy to improve rotation. But all these procedures involved skeletal realignment without discussion of the soft tissue anomalies and the forces applied by them. So whether the long term benefits are there is still questionable. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about Radial Club Hand and its management. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning, hand surgery, trauma surgery, plastic surgery and ethics. Manakkam.